So our last speaker is Nicholas Key. And Nicholas is a co-founder and executive director of Next Generation Creators, a nonprofit organization aimed at promoting the learning of digital literacy skills for youth in the Caribbean. Nicholas is a 2017 Prime Minister's Youth Award for, um, for Entrepreneurship and the 2016 Queen's Young Leaders Runner-Up Award recipient. Nicholas is a PhD candidate at the University of the West Indies, Jamaica, in Sustainable Development Program, where his thesis concentration is on decentralized and distributed technology abortion of underdeveloped information system. Since the beginning of his career, he has launched companies in the sectors of education, marketing, big data, 3D, and 4D printing. He has had the honor of working with NASA, the European Organization and Nuclear Research, Red Cross International, and the United Nations or renewable energy related projects and a policy reform for developing countries and refuge camps. Nicholas is presently a Jamaican youth ambassador to the Camp Commonwealth and aims to give voice to the concerns highlighted throughout the diaspora while empowering generations of youth to play an active role in their country's development. His primary focus within his role are economic development and opportunity technology and education. In this role, he highlights the importance of technology and digital literacy in societies of developing countries in the Commonwealth. He spends the majority of his time consulting with various government agencies and the private organization throughout the diaspora and to help implement the technological solution in their society. I hand over now to Nicholas Key. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for being here, uh, at least virtually. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, I guess next year things will be <laughs> a bit more in person. Uh, but for now, um, I really wanted to touch on um, a few of the things uh, that we, I guess, can take advantage of today, um, especially in the looming um, pandemic with respects to uh, the digital ecosystem that we know are essentially all forced into. Uh, and so to kick things off, um, I essentially wanted to really look at, um, or I wanted you to really reflect and think about the role of technology um, today uh, in society. Uh, currently, technology overall uh, contributes about the entire industry, that is, is about 5.2 trillion US dollars. Um, and so essentially that only accounts for um, mainly the global south, gl sorry, the global north, uh, because a lot, of the, a lot of data is not um, collected and aggregated about the global south. Um, and that's really because um, we have not inherently invested in, um, in technology development in our region, the global south that is, but even more um, particular, even even specifically um, like the Caribbean, for instance. Um, and so with that being said, uh, with this huge industry, I think we can all recognize that software is essentially eating the world. It's eating everything. Um, and because of this, we have uh, a whole lot of jobs being lost, but also as a caveat, we have a, a whole lot more jobs being created and reinvented and transformed. Um, and uh, we see this every day with, you know, the you know, like the, I guess the, the, the booming effect of like the digital camera and uh, like the decline of uh, companies such as Kodak, for instance, we're seeing um, the transformation of companies. We're seeing the demolishing of a lot of um, monopolies, traditional monopolies that is, um, to give rise to a lot of new aged um, monopolies. Uh, and so, uh, some of them, of course, you probably know are, you know, the Facebooks, uh, Amazon, um, the Twitter, uh, and a few other big tech companies. And so we're going to continue to see um, a lot of that happening. Um, and this, those companies that I just listed, or rather the companies that we know about today, only touch on a fraction of um, the true impact of technology on the entire world. 
um, we really haven't seen um, a huge disruption in um, a lot of areas that are key to our survival, such as healthcare, education, um, agriculture, and even by extension tourism. Um, there, I, I believe that because of um, this pandemic, things have essentially been accelerated and we're now going to be seeing um, the emergence of um, the augmentation of many of these industries because of that. So uh, before we dive into the, the crux of things, um, I'm sure from like, uh, I guess the introduction um, that Michelle made of me, uh, you probably know that I, I run this organization that essentially um, promotes the learning of digital literacy um, for youth. Um, and so many times when I, or by extension, we speak or think about digital literacy, uh, it really isn't um, captured as a standard, mainly because it hasn't been a priority for many years. Um, and so as it turns out, um, it will have to be a priority now. Um, so just to um, give you like a blank slate um, and to give you even more context, digital literacy is essentially uh, the means by which uh, you have the ability to learn skills, to learn, um, work, uh, live in a society where communication and access to information is increasingly um, through digital technologies. Um, and so that can be from, you know, platforms, internet platforms, social media, and, you know, by extension, mobile devices. Um, and to extend on that, um, digital literacy really tackles a lot of factors surrounding learning and development. And so they happen to be design thinking, um, technology skills as a whole. Um, so things related to um, like software development and engineering. Um, there's mathematical literacy. Uh, there's information and communication technology, ICT literacy, and that really dives into a lot of media and communication um, means. Uh, and essentially just a lot of research. Um, and there's of course general problem solving. Um, we happen to take a lot of these for granted, but um, I'm not sure if you've noticed, uh, well, you probably have noticed the Caribbean in particular, uh, we haven't, we aren't necessarily come, uh, we aren't necessarily at the um, comparative rate as our um, North American or even European um, counterparts. Uh, and so that mainly, is because um, of our um, lack of focus uh, in this area in particular, um, and by overall, generally, the lack of um, development of the tech ecosystem. Um, with that being said, though, uh, I definitely see a lot of strides being made um, now because of the pandemic. And so I, I just hope that we will essentially um, con continue on that, uh, that path to you know, post-pandemic development. Uh, and so with that said, uh, we can take a little uh, step back, not even step back, but just observe what has been happening because of the because of COVID-19 and our reactions towards it as um, a society. Um, it has essentially changed the way we learn, work and play. Um, you know, in the past, um, it used to be where we need to uh, really head to a classroom or a lecture hall or theater. Um, to learn from a professor or like faculty. Um, now, essentially everything is, is pretty much online. It's not necessarily it, it not necess it's not necessarily the best solution right now, but it is what we have. Um, and as we have progressed over the past couple of months, we've seen uh, where a huge number of attempts have been made to really um, zero in on you know the, the core facets of education and not just education by extension, you know, just learning in general um, and to really reimagine what, uh, what the future of um, society will look like, what it will look like, you know, post the pandemic, um, especially as we continue to make a lot of strides in the development of technology globally. Um, it has also changed the way we work. Uh, so I'm not sure if many of you um, well, rather, for those of you who are working, I'm sure you have um, experienced where employers have maybe asked for you to work from home, um, work from your living room or your bedroom. Um, and even in many cases, it has been um, mandated by a lot of governments to, for you to do so as well. Um, and so the challenges that are being faced now with regards to that 
is uh, to really zero in and think about um, what effective work looks like and what work really should be and how much, uh, and rather what boundaries we need to put in place um, to ensure that we have a, a healthy work-life balance. Um, and so the other, the other aspect of um, society that, you know, COVID-19 has really disrupted for sure is of course play. Um, no, uh, because we're essentially all, isolation, all isolated socially, uh, we're seeing um, a few innovations being sparked um, in the space of you know general recreation. Um, I'm sure many of you who like have Instagram, uh, you're probably aware of you know the augmented reality filters that you probably um, see. Uh, the same with uh, Snapchat as well, and for sure TikTok. Um, and uh, I guess before the pandemic, there was of course you know Pokemon Go. Uh, but as we progress um, throughout the rest of the year, and even in the next few years, we'll continue to see the development of a lot of, um, I guess, new aged, new aged ways of engagement. Uh, aside from you know the the obvious that I just mentioned, there are a few nuances that have been um, introduced to the space because um, of the pandemic. Uh, one of them happens to be, especially like in Jamaica, happens to be like online radio. Uh, it really, the radio industry has had been dying out before, uh, but the pandemic has essentially um, re-sparked uh, a lot of a lot of innovations in that space, and mainly made uh, the medium the medium and rather media available online in different ways. Uh, so, uh, actually, for the past couple of months, um, especially in um, in the online space, we've had a lot of online radio hostings being held every week where like, for instance, dance hall or reggae music or even soca music has been played for uh, like a period of maybe five to six hours throughout the night. And then you have a lot of interactions from people who are probably listening in. So uh, now that we are in um, the crux of it, uh, we now need to imagine or rather reimagine what uh, the future of learning is going to look like. Uh, and so here I essentially have highlighted um, the three major components of, um, or rather the three tiers of digital literacy. Uh, and I decided to go with digital literacy in particular because uh, I'm sure as I've discussed before, technology is essentially impacting every single um, aspect and facet of society. And what that means is that in order to uh, essentially operate in an effective way uh, and to communicate with everyone and to contribute to society um, generally, you will essentially need to be digitally literate in some, at least on, uh, at least on some level or scale. Uh, for basic digital literacy, uh, that essentially is tied down to like, you know, data annotation, IP collection, um, and essentially critical research ability. Um, and to kind of just touch on that last point, um, we've had the advent of like uh, fake news and um, a lot of deep fakes being developed from um, the internet and I guess bad actors. And so because of that, we're now seeing the emergence of misinformation being spread. Um, it, is, it will be our responsibility um, to essentially learn the differences and discern uh, between actual facts um, and basically a lot of opinions or misinformation. And so that kind of lends to, to that aspect. Um, the next tier, of course, is intermediate and that lends to basic software development um, and content development, as well as you know, social media um, and marketing analysis um, in the digital space. Uh, the, the last tier, uh, which is where you find a lot of, um, I guess, people in tech traditional tech companies uh, as well as tech enabled companies are uh, you know delving into things like software development um, artificial intelligence development augmented reality and virtual reality development as well as you know game development and so these are extremely key because as I mentioned before software is eating um, software is eating everything um, and it is, of course, for sure, eating the future of work, or rather the now of work, uh, but more specifically, the traditional 
approaches to work. I, in my previous slides, I had mentioned that a lot of monopolies are being broken down and essentially taken over by a lot of digital approaches and um, software development companies uh, because they have not been able to transform um, and adapt with the times. Um, and so what we will essentially see because uh, of, you know, of course, the pandemic, but post the pandemic is that a lot of companies, or rather I hope, that a lot of traditional companies will essentially transform uh, to more data-driven approaches uh, that will allow for better decisions to be made um, so that more capital, not more capital, but more profits can be achieved and by, but by extension, more human capacity can be developed. Um, and it essentially leads to a healthier um, development of um, economies. Um, with that said, uh, we also need to um, we also need to recognize that a lot of these companies also need to innovate from within. And that only really can happen with the, with the introduction of youth to the organization. Um, and so with that said, um, I for sure know that um, in the past, um, especially even up to like probably two, five years ago, um, a lot of companies in the Caribbean region in particular have been um, very stagnant with regards to um, moving up employees or really hiring um, youth that have a lot of potential. Um, and, but more specifically, hiring youth and putting them in positions of power um, so that they can make decisions that essentially drive um, the, the impact of the entire um, company, but by extension, the people and customers that they serve. Um, this is extremely important, especially now as we um, continue to make a lot of generational shifts um, from millennials to, you know, even the Gen Zers. Um, and so essentially if you, you know, if companies and organizations don't do that, um, they're essentially missing out on a huge market share that is growing constantly every day. Um, but not just that, a huge market share that has a lot of um, capital incentive to spend. Um, I for sure know that uh, because of a lot of digital um, platforms and, and implementations in society, we now have the development um, of um, the ability for a lot of youth to make a lot of money online. And so um, with that being said, there along, the, along that same um, train of thought, um, in order to innovate and really um, take advantage of the market, you need to then um, automate a lot of your products and services. That should be the ultimate goal. Uh, how essentially uh, do we become um, more digitally enabled um, as a society? Um, for sure, uh, I'm sure that, you know, you probably have noticed, but many people who have uh, really been able to take uh, classes online, um, they are for sure experiencing a lot of um, internet connectivity issues. And I'm sure you may have noticed that for those of you who are still going to school, many of your classmates probably can't participate because of the lack of connectivity generally. And uh, along with that, um, people don't necessarily have access to a lot of technology. Um, and by extension, there's a, a, a train of, you know, lack of robust software development. Um, Zoom is fine, for instance, as a, as a software, but it doesn't exactly make to a lot of the, um, the needs that we uh, essentially require to operate in um, the classroom setting or even at work. Um, and so in this digitally enabled society, it really will force us to rethink how we think about um, capitalism and um, you know, making money. Um, and in order to really touch on all of these um, four factors and to um, bring us into the digital age um, completely, it will require the develop, it will require the insight from a lot of organizations, um, both for profit and non profit, and also you to really help to make the push and advocate for a lot of these changes. So, uh, with that said, um, there are just you know two questions to um, leave and and ask um, all of you. Uh, we need to start asking ourselves, and this is really for organizations at least for now, um, what steps are you as an organization making in you know, the preparation 
for the future um, while they are still employees? How are they being um, upskilled or are they being trained? Um, because the meat of the matter is that, you know, if that is not happening, they will essentially leave and um, themselves uh, and essentially move on to more progressive companies um, if traditional companies are interested in youth. And for youth, um, by extension, and even just schools, as we are in the same ecosystem, um, how how are we how are we schools and youth preparing for the next wave of learning? Um, and really, that lends to um, beyond you know learning uh, from online sources and and taking a lot of uh, and taking a lot of jobs on you know getting a lot of certification from um, the digital spaces. But what will things look like in the near future and even the future future as we continue on this trend? Um, and so essentially the main question I'm going to ask or just leave you with is how are we going to and how are we willing to disrupt? Um, thank you.